Welcome to Skid Row. I do not recommend for anyone to go here, especially if you have no reason to be here. This place is 50 blocks full of homelessness, drug addiction, and mental health problems. As someone who has been local to the area for a long time, I understand how I could have lived so many years of my life nearby without ever visiting the place. Although some may assume that Skid Row represents poverty, poverty is only part of the story. As we know, poverty can come in many different forms, such as living paycheck to paycheck, sharing a sleeping space in a bathroom, living on food stamps, and having few savings, if any, in your bank account. Although poverty is a part of the story in Skid Row, Skid Row represents a lot more than just simply poverty. It represents drug addiction, mental illness, and definitely underrepresented runaway people from family or spousal abuse. This is in the middle of downtown Los Angeles, California. One of the cities in the world with the most wealth per capita. And despite this being such a rich city, it is also the host of one of the ugliest homeless encampments that exists in the entire world. And as ugly as it is here, this place has to exist, seeing as it is easier to manage this one area, which is basically a containment area for the homeless, than have them scattered all throughout the rest of the city. Skid Row is bordered by some very nice and expensive areas, which include Little Tokyo to the north, the Arts District to the east, and Fashion District to the south. The Arts District is considered the bougie area where rent can average at $3,500 a month, even going up to over $4,000 a month. There's all kinds of projects that help people. They come over the weekend. Is there a barber shop like right nearby? No, is that like a barber shop on wheels? Oh, is it here or no? I think these guys are on to something. Oh, barber shops? Yeah, like uh, they shave you, they give you new clothes or something. Even while walking out in these blocks that make up Skid Row, you have to be aware of your surroundings at all times. The street smell of human waste all over, and although there seem to be cleanup crews and public bathrooms provided free of charge, the streets are still full of the smell and sights of urine and feces. While we can confirm that the zone has improved considerably compared to the past, it still has a long way to go. It seems that the gang activity that was involved in charging the homeless people to use bathrooms is no longer operating and there are government sponsored porter potties and portable sinks for anyone to use, homeless or not. An interesting thing to note is that they have employees sitting and supervising these government subsidized portable bathrooms to prevent any sort of suspicious activity or even people who are in there to cause damage or vandalism. You definitely see the evidence of drug use. Oh yeah. You see them waiting with the gurney over oh, there? Uh, just an ambulance on call. Because of drug use, like overdoses and stuff? Yeah, exactly. I think they know they're gonna have a call in the next hour or so. Well, where are we are we getting to the border? Are we getting to like a nicer area now or? No, we're going deeper. We're going deeper. Yeah. We wanna keep filming. Yeah. I don't wanna shove it in people's faces. It's a laundromat in the health center. Maybe sell cigarettes. We got a fight breaking out. Let's see, he's running with the baseball bat, yeah. Yeah. Earlier I mentioned that I wouldn't recommend people to go to Skid Row without having a reason to be there. By the way, if you're filming while you're over there and you get caught, it becomes even more dangerous. Far more dangerous, actually. People will follow you if they catch you filming. They will also threaten you. 
And if you can imagine, there are people out there who have not much to lose and will not mind at all going to jail or doing whatever physically possible to make you stop filming. You never know what people are carrying out there or what they're willing to hit you with or stab you with. Oh. Well, now you know I wasn't lying about that. From everything that I filmed, there were definitely a lot of things that I couldn't catch on camera, and some other things I deleted just for my personal safety. Things that I saw that didn't make the video were the multiple drug deals happening right in front of me, or even in the background, people smoking crystal meth right in the open, and including another man who was actually physically following us after he saw us filming, and he was very angry and he looked like he was gonna get very violent. I want to get as much quality footage as possible, while of course staying safe. In a place like this, you do have to flirt between that line of quality footage and safety. So I do hope that this footage brings awareness and also helps people identify some family members or friends that may have gone missing and are on Skid Row right now. So much shit on the floor. Shit, like actually. Yeah, that was over there. Yeah, there's so much pieces. <laughs> this is the inside of this gentleman's tent. It's pretty regular. Clothes, food. This is just a sleeping space. This is not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not even that bad in there. It doesn't, it doesn't smell bad at all. Hey, it's pretty nice in there, I gotta say. Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. So what, we got Miguel? Estrella. Estrella? And... Él es Manolo. Manolo. Viva United States of America. Yeah. Although Manuel may have been an exception to the rule in Skid Row, this was his tent. The inside of his tent was completely clean, and I felt no indication that he or his friends were on any sort of drugs. It makes it all the more heartbreaking that he is stuck in Skid Row living in a tent. My name is Brian Brooks. What's Brian happened? Brooks? Yeah. And how long did you live in Skid Row for? Uh, let's see here. I would say I probably lived down here maybe about four or five years. Four or five years? Um, I, like I said, the height of my drug addiction was in 2002. At yeah. the time, I was just, um, yeah, using, using and abusing, and it wasn't a good thing. So uh, I fell hard, you know, fell mm -hmm. real hard. It was coke first out here, then yeah. it turned into meth. Yeah, yeah, you said everything was cocaine down here, yeah. you know? Uh, shit, within like a four year period, it switched. Switch now, everybody down here on meth. You still got your old crackheads. So <laughs> meth is like the main one. Yeah, meth right now. Oh. It's crazy, dude. This shit's crazy because it's like um, this epidemic that's brewing. This is a new yeah. epidemic that's brewing. Um, it's like the crack cocaine epidemic that hit the African American community back in the 80s. Yeah. It fucking destroyed the African American community. And it's meth, it's starting to be every fucking where. It's out in South Orange County, it's out in Irvine. You're starting to see a lot of the Caucasian kids use it and mm. it's really, 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 really fucking us up here. So if we don't get a hold of this shit right now, we gonna be in a world of trouble within the next 10 years. And that's some real shit. I don't know what we gotta do, but we have to start yeah. somewhere. So it's meth and fentanyl as well, or just meth? Really, like said, principle. There's no clean drugs out there. Mm. Meth has fentanyl in it. Yeah. Cocaine has fentanyl in it. There's no clean drugs. Look, this, yeah. this ain't like the 70s no more. You just yeah. say, hey, let's go get some coke. Uh, yeah. No. Today, you play, you die. Yeah. This shit's fucking tainted. Ain't, ain't no good drugs out there. The days are over with. Mm. It's tainted. You get high, you die. It's real yeah. simple. I had a cousin, I've been screaming and fussing with him about doing his thing oh cuz I'm not doing nothing so he decides he want to go take some fucking pills yeah guess what mixed with fentanyl he's dead mm. this was two months ago that's terrible this is two months ago this was you know what I'm saying he, he's in Chicago yeah I don't get his phone calls no more Jeez. you know what I'm saying no more no more no more my cousin calling me you know yeah. what I'm saying 
everything got that fat in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you be a fool, man, to go smoke some shit. Yeah. Somebody come offer you some, some cocaine, slap the shit out of them. Yeah. It was coke. Than that. Like I told yeah. you. Meth is five times stronger than crack. Why mm. the fuck would I smoke meth? My friend, what is your name and how did you end up in Skid Row? Uh, in Los Angeles? Or where was it? Canada. Detroit. Oh, you're from Canada? Yeah. Off the military. Uh, <clears throat> she had good battle. And she had good battle. And can't come back. What was it? What happened? You... I had to go to battle. You had to go to battle? Get, get, get some Far East. Yeah. I was military soldier. And uh, he said, if you go, I can't, you know, can't come back here anymore. But what, what brought you all the way down to LA? I uh, had yeah, a girlfriend down here. A girlfriend? Yeah. But did you work down here? I worked down here. When, when was the last time you worked? About a week ago was the last time I worked. A week ago? Yeah. You like just odd jobs? Just like random stuff? I or? Had a, I had a, I worked for the guys in the black of my cars. So there. you worked for the police then? Soldiers. Or soldiers? Yeah. Soldier man is for gay. Do you have any type of drug addiction? No. No? What's that pipe over there behind you? Crystal meth. Crystal meth? Crystal meth? Yeah. Alright. Thank you so much, Sean. You just got me lurry. Yeah. I'm not that kind of guy. That, that, that just ain't me. You know, so... I ain't popping them up for pills. Yeah. You, you jitterbus, keep all that bullshit. Yeah. You know, no, none of that lean. Mm. I'm an old crackhead, period. Yeah. No fans bust about it. That was my struggle. It's over with now. Yeah. And I'm moving on. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no new shit. Keep that bullshit. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So yeah. you said now you do haircuts. For... Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I've been a barber since I was 13. Yeah. Uh, don't fuck with that meth, dude. That's meth <laughs> is fucking a monster, bro. Yeah. That's oh, my it biggest is. message. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. It's like, it's not like I said, it's not like back in the day, man. This shit five times stronger. One time, you hook, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, it, uh, no, no, no. You don't need that in your life. What's your name and where my are you name from? Is, uh, Chef A. Wayne. And my real name is Nathan Pinnacle. Right now, I'm just getting low. I just got kicked out of program. Just did eight years in prison. We how do we want to better ourselves? When you scored, I was a few minutes late in the program in Hollywood. Yeah. They just kicked me out. Now I'm down there selling my stuff. Mm. Come on, we got more homeless people ever, especially yeah. in Los Angeles. The prison is full and the system is fucked up. If y'all say y'all want to help, help. Yeah. If you motherfuckers say you want to help, help. I've been out here for 40 years. Every time I get out of prison, I bounce out here on Skid Row. Yeah. It's not cool, but respect though. I see it all. Murder. Robert, yeah. It ain't right. It's not right. The system is not right. I'm not bringing the drugs in. Yeah. You motherfuckers got the airplanes and shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give a motherfucker a snack. The yeah. engine and get that money. Yeah. Life won't get shit. You wanna give them a fucking stimulus check and give it back to the system? That ain't, that ain't living. Mm. That just existing. And it's gonna be a city, California, Los Angeles. This ain't no fucking, and this is a city of pity. Do you wanna help? How the fuck you want to help us? You ain't helping us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You give them these tippers and bits. They're, they're, they're fucking up my people. Yeah. You're fucking up my people. You're not helping at all. You're fucking up. Yeah. If you know better, you can do better. Yeah. Today I drank a little beer. I done did every drug that was. Yeah. Every drug. I've been drugged up and down the street, hit upside the fucking head. They kicked me out in the fucking cold. You said you want to help me? Yeah. You ain't helping me. And guess what? I live today, not just existing. Yeah. Tonight I sleep out on the street and I'm selling my shit. My people are suffering. My people are starving. We have no disturbed like myself. Yeah. And you saying you want to help us? Please, listen. It's sad. It's sad. But what do you do every day when you don't have nothing to do? When you don't have no rules and example to follow? Skid Row will always receive attention. Because for many, it's the last place that they would ever want to end up in. Many people want to visit, but I can testify as a man who has walked through multiple ugly areas in different countries, there were select streets that I did not want to fully explore, and especially not by myself, even in the daytime. Known for mental instability and drugs, it still has a raw human element that many of us can still relate to. That element of survival. 
whether some of us spend any amount of time there, whether by choice or by obligation, in some sense it's not only the Skid Row, but maybe our Skid Row. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Anyways, please like, and please give me a subscribe. Thank you. That guy, that guy just, yep, that? Yeah. yep, yep. That's why that they're going to walk here. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The homeless Asian guy? What the fuck is that? I told you, you're gonna see everything. You're gonna see a whole mixture of oh stuff. Oh god.